Matthew 21. And uh, last week, we sort of deviated a little bit, I guess, from our preaching. I guess we've been talking about salvation words. I think a couple of weeks ago, or maybe three or four weeks ago now, we talked about imputation. Talk about a salvation word. And we went to justification. And then we preached on redemption. And I think last week, like I said, September 11th, we talked about the Titanic and all of that. And uh, this morning, I want to get back to a salvation word that is a lot of times misinterpreted. And you may say, you may say, well, why, Brother Jeremy, why are you just keep on going over these salvation words? Well, let me explain it to you this way. There are a lot of churches you can go to. I've been to a lot of churches. Some churches, every church does things just a little different, and that's totally fine. Some churches won't allow drums in their church. Some churches don't want a piano in their church. Some churches don't let their uh, preacher have a facial hair and all of that. And we went in one place, of course, I, I don't usually have facial hair. I can't even grow it on top of my head, much less anywhere else. And... Uh, and, 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 and I'm not, but, uh, but I just, this just come across my mind. And the preacher said, oh, I tell you, y'all can't sing because one of your singers has a beard. And we don't, we don't allow facial hair. And uh, I said, well, does eyebrows count? <laughs> That's on your face. Well, we ain't been back there ever again, but anyway. Some churches do contemporary, some do praise and worship, some do southern gospel like what you just heard. All churches do things a little different and some churches tell you how long you can have your hair and how short the dress can be or how long it's supposed to be and all of this kind of stuff and all of that is preference and well and whatever you want to do. But let me tell you, it doesn't matter how many things you have right. If you have salvation wrong, it doesn't matter how many things you have right because if you got salvation wrong, all the other stuff don't matter. And so we must have, I don't care where you go to church, I don't care what the name is over the door, we must agree on this subject. We can argue and we can discuss our uh, opinions and our preferences. I have certain preferences that I like better than others, but when I go to other places, if I don't have Bible for my preference, I keep my preferences to myself uh, unless I got Bible to go along with my preference. But if we don't have salvation right, it doesn't matter what else we got right if salvation is all wrong. So I want you to look at this in Matthew chapter number 21. Look at this. But what think ye, a certain man had two sons. He came to the first and said, son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. And the son woke up in ICU. <laughs> That's not what, it, I just had a flashback of what my daddy would. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> Uh, this boy said, I will not, but afterward he repented and went. He came to the second and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I'll go, sir, and went not. So later on, if you were to keep reading, if you had your Bible, you keep reading, Jesus asked the disciples, now, which one of these two, which one of these two was right? The one that said, I'm not going, and then repented and went. Or the one that said, yeah, I'll go, and wound up not going. It's the one that repented. He changed his heart. He changed his mind. He changed his attitude toward the father. A certain man had two sons. He changed his heart, his mind, his attitude toward uh, the father and went and done what the father said. Now, let's go to the Lord in word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, as we look at this word, Repentance. What does it mean? What does it mean for us today? Lord, I pray there might be somebody in the room that has never accepted you as a personal Savior. I pray, Lord, that everybody in the room will figure out how important this is, how important it is to pay attention. And it might distract somebody sitting next to them. And Lord, I pray God, that that would be the case and conviction. With, we've already had a good service. Lord, we've already felt you here. 
But Lord, we don't want you leaving. Stay with us. And Lord, convict hearts right now. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible, the Bible says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but it's long-suffering. You ought to say amen right there. Long-suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. What does the word repentance mean? You know, some people say, well, you've got to confess all of your sins before God will save you. And you've got to come down to the altar and repent and confess all of your sins. Well, let me help you. If you have to confess all of your sins before God will save you, then there's probably not anybody in here that's saved because we'd still be down here thinking of something. So you didn't confess all of your sins before God saved you. So that's not repentance. The Bible definition of the repentance is the Matthew 21, what we just read, two sons. He told his son, go work my vineyard. The son said, I ain't doing it. That's in the Greek. I ain't doing it. And then he repented. He changed his heart, mind, and attitude and wound up doing and agreeing with the Father. In other words, he looked at himself, says, told the Father, I ain't going. And then he, he got convicted and he said, you know what? The Father's right and I'm wrong. And I'm going to repent and change the way I'm looking at my father and my father is right and I am in the wrong. And he wound up going to do what the father said. Now, let me give you this real quick. Sunday morning preaching. This is Sunday morning. And if you want to get something, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9 and 10, two verses. Watch this. There are different kinds of repentance. Now, I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repentance. But you were made sorry after a godly manner that you might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow work. Godly sorrow worketh what? Repentance to what? Salvation. Oh, there we go. Not to be repented of. Hey, once you get saved, you can't change your mind and say, Lord, I, 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 I changed my mind. I don't want to be saved no more. You can't re-repent after you done got saved. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But now the sorrow of the world worketh death. So you can be sorry and still die and go to hell. Did you know, ladies and gentlemen, around Christmas time, there are a lot of people that repent for buying gifts for people that they bought gifts for. I wish I wouldn't. I repent. I changed my mind about spending that much money on somebody I don't even like. I repent of buying this particular vehicle. It's too expensive. I didn't think about it before we did it. I've already signed the paperwork. I repent of buying this vehicle. That, my friend, is not salvation. You can repent of a lot of things and not go to heaven. There is a worldly repentance. There is a godly repentance. And the Bible tells us in Luke 13, verse 3, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Acts 17, 30 tells us, at the times of this ignorance, God winked it, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. What is repentance? Now, you say, preacher, all of these different things. We talked about the Titanic last Sunday. We talked about September the 11th, the buildings coming down. We talk about all of these tsunamis. And tsunamis over there in Sumatra, the islands of Sumatra, are killing 200,000 people. Earthquakes and these volcanoes going off. It's almost like the world. The earth is saying, repent, repent. The world is even saying, repent. Every time, Hurricane Katrina, when it come through and wiped that whole city out, it's crying to the world, repent. Change your heart, mind, and attitude toward the Father. There is a worldly repentance. There is a godly repentance. You say, preacher, do you have any examples? Well, I sure do. Now, let me give you an example. Repentance is not remorse. 
Repentance is not uh, reformation. I had one fellow say, uh, 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 I, I asked him, I said, you ready to go to heaven? You know the Lord. He said, oh, yeah, I've turned over a new leaf. And you realize what that term means. Turned over a new leaf. Well, every time the wind blows, it's going to turn right back over. <laughs> I've turned over a new leaf. I've quit this. I've do- I stopped that. I quit this and I quit that. That's not salvation. Amen. That's right. Come on now. Quitting and stopping and this, that, and the other. And I quit this and I, I repent of this. That, my friend, is not within itself salvation. It must be a change of heart, mind, and attitude toward God the Father. Let me give you an example. Uh, uh, y'all remember a fellow in the Old Testament by the name of Pharaoh. Pharaoh and Moses. Moses went to Pharaoh, and uh, the Egyptian people had God's people in bondage. They were slaves in that particular environment, in Egyptian bondage. And God told Moses, said, you go to Pharaoh, let my people go. And if he won't, boy, we're going to send the plagues and all of that kind of stuff. And you know, the first plague that he sent turned the water into blood. And boy, that went through. And if you read that whole story, which we don't have time to this morning, but if you read that whole story, Pharaoh, after, uh, after that, all the frogs, the frogs came. Moses called, said, get, Pharaoh, get Moses in here. Moses, get these frogs. Tell the Lord, I'm sorry. Get these frogs out of here. He repented, but it was just to get the frogs out. A lot of people. Now, you say, preacher, what's an, what's a, a, an example that, that, that I can relate to? All right, watch this. Let me see if I can act it out. The husband and the wife sitting in the pew. It's invitation time. Sam is playing the invitation song. People are standing, and the wife keeps would you, I'll go down there and join the church if you'll just leave me alone. I'll go down there and kneel. I will sign a card. I will, I will get one of the bananas and be one of the bunch if you'll just leave me alone. That's repenting just to get the pressure off. A lot of people, they repent just to get the pressure off. I remember old Pharaoh. Pharaoh was the frogs, and after the frogs, it was the lice, and after the lice, it was the flies, and after the locusts, and all of this, and ultimately, the first, the death of the firstborn. Then Pharaoh repented. He said, "Moses, get these, pe- take your people, and get them out of here." They left. Guess what? Pharaoh changed his mind, got his army, and took after them, crossing the Red Sea. That's worldly repentance. And do you know what happened to Pharaoh? Pharaoh died in the Red Sea. The sorrow of the world worketh death. Pharaoh. Let me give you a New Testament. That's an Old Testament. Maybe maybe you're more inclined to the New Testament example. Well, let me give you one. Y'all remember a fellow by the name of Judas. Judas taught Sunday school for the Lord. I mean, he healed people for the Lord. He preached for the Lord. He was a treasure. You got to watch out for the treasures. But anyway, he, uh, <clears throat> what is the middle of the month? Okay, good. I'm good. All right. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Anyway, you really have to watch out for them treasures. But anyway, this treasure, I mean, he walked with the Lord. He taught with the Lord for three and a half years, taught Sunday school, read his Bible, did all of that kind of stuff. And then when it come time, they're out there in the garden of Gethsemane. Jesus is sweating as it were great drops of blood. All of a sudden, here comes a, an army ready to arrest the Lord, led by, take a wild guess, Judas is carried. He walks up to the Lord, kisses the Lord on the face. And by the next morning, he's crawling the walls of hell. The only man in the Bible that kissed the door to heaven and went to hell. He had blood on his Lips, but he didn't have blood on his heart. This is what Judas said. Y'all ready? Judas, then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself. Judas repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I've betrayed innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to it. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. He repented. 
of all that he'd done. And you're thinking, my goodness, he repented, he changed his mind. And there's one thing he didn't do. When he repented, he didn't turn toward God. You can repent of all of your sins. You can name them one by one, start at the top. And if you can remember them all, help yourself, but I doubt you can. And you can get done repenting, and you can repent and repent and repent. Lord, I'm sorry for getting caught. <laughs> there is a difference. There's people sometimes they come to the altar and they're repenting of what they did last weekend. And while they're repenting of what they did last weekend, they were going ahead and thinking about what they're going to do next weekend. That's not repentance. There's two examples right there, Pharaoh and Judas. But let me give you, let me give you one. You say, preacher, okay, you told us what, what repentance is not. Tell us what it is. All right, best story that I got. Luke 18, watch this. Y'all ready? And he spake this parable. We're going to wind it down. The, the light bulb is going to come on. You're going to throw a songbook. Your hands is going to go up in the air. And hallelujah, we're going to go eat something here in a minute. <laughs> and he spake this parable unto certain who trusted in themselves that they were and despised others. Two men went to the temple to pray. That's what we're here to do today, right? Two men went to the temple to pray. One, a Pharisee, and the other, a public, not a Republican, a publican. <laughs> Watch, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I'm not like them other folks at Millsville. Mm, I know, Lord, I go out there. But I'm glad I ain't like none of them. Mm. I give all my tithes. I'm not an adulterer. I'm not an extortioner. I thank thee that I'm not as other men are. Or even this publican that parked right beside me knowing he should be parking in the back. He parked right beside me in the front parking lot, walked in with me. Lord, I thank you. I'm not even like him. I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all I possess. I wish I had a church full of them. Tithes all, I mean, hallelujah. Anyway, fast twice a week. You said, preacher, what's that? That's getting to the table as fast as you can. Verse 13, and the publican standing afar off would not lift so much his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. The Pharisee came in and told everything he wasn't. The publican didn't confess his sins. He didn't confess all of his sins. He said, God, I am a sinner. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Well, let's see what Jesus said about him. I tell you, this man went to, down to his house, what? Justified. Justified, rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Y'all see them two fellows right there? One, here. It's not confessing what you've done. Yeah. Repentance is confessing who you are. Yeah. Let me get over here to the Pentecostal side. <laughs> Repentance is not confessing what you've done. Yeah. Repentance is confessing who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Let me give you this example. Y'all see that tree right there? Y'all yeah. see the fruit on that tree? Yeah. Those are sins. Those red apples up there are sins. And uh, you can come down here and you confess all in. Boy, there's lying and there's, there's uh, whatever else. None of your business. All them red apples. That's the fruit. That's sins, plural. That's the fruit of what a sinner produces. The Pharisee came in. He says, I don't have many apples on my tree. 
because I'm pretty clean. I'm good. The publican came down. His apple tree was full of them. He said, I, Lord, I'm not even going to waste time confessing all my sins because you already know them. I'm going to get down to the root of the problem. And the root of the problem is the reason I produce that is because I am a sinner. And I'm agreeing with God, and I'm agreeing against myself that God is right, I am wrong, he's the Savior, I'm not, and I've got to put my faith and trust in him to the finished work of the cross of Calvary to be clean. You see, it's not a matter of confessing all your little apples up on the tree, because guess what? They grow back. But if you get down to the root the reason that thing produces those is because of what the root is. The root is I was born a sinner, a sinner by nature, a sinner by birth, a sinner by choice. It ain't a matter of confessing what you've done. It's confessing who you are. Look in the mirror every morning and say, God, that guy I'm looking at in the mirror is wrong and you're right. You say, preacher, how do you repent? All right, look here, let me show you. Listen, I don't want to offend nobody. Y'all know me, I would never offend nobody. All right, let's, the sin, let's pick one of them red apples right there. Mm, the sin of gossip. And boy, you've been gossiping all week long. Mm, boy, you have. And all of a sudden, you're sitting there reading your Bible, and all of a sudden, you come across verses that's against what God says about gossip. And you're like, well, God... You're right, and I'm wrong. God, you said you're against that. You're right, and I'm wrong. I'm changing my mind, my heart. I hope it's coming through. I'm changing my heart and mind and attitude, and I'm going to start agreeing with you and what it says versus what I say. Here's a problem. I don't even know what time it is, but I'm on a roll now. Look here. People say, now, Brother Jeremy, I don't see nothing wrong with such and such. I don't see nothing wrong with such and such. Can I, can I say, I'm not even looking. I'm looking at the floor right here. Watch this. It don't matter what you think about such and such. What does God think about it? Now, preacher, I don't think there's anything wrong. You can love who you want to love. And marry who you want to marry. It don't matter what you think. What's God say about it? Right. And when you look at it, you repent and say, God, you're against that. I repent. I change my heart, mind, and attitude. I'm agreeing with you over myself. Yeah, that's right. That, my friend, is true repentance. That's right. yeah. Now, yeah. let me get on and let me give you the last point. Y'all ready for the last point? Oh, boy, yeah, that was a good, oh, that's good. Because if you'd have said amen, man, I, woo. Now, last point. There's godly repentance. I showed you that. There's worldly repentance. We showed you that. Number three, and I'm done, and then there's repentance too late. Let me give you an example. Y'all remember a fellow by the name of Noah? Noah was out there. God told him to build an ark. And he told him to build an ark because it was going to start raining out of the sky. Nobody had ever seen rain before. They'd never seen water come out of the sky before. And so Noah's out there, and he's building this thing and preaching for 120 years. You think about the same message every Sunday. Hear the same message every Sunday. Noah, don't you have a different sermon? No. Get on the ark. Get on the ark. Get on the ark before it's too late. That was his sermon. 120 years. You imagine 120 years preaching to the whole earth and only eight people get on? What? I mean, what, how depressing can that be? I mean, he's out there preaching, and boy, all the, all the upper crust and the big weed. Hey, y'all stay away from that Noah fella. He's crazy. He's crazy. He's a religious nut. He's talking about water coming. No water's ever come out of the sky. He's building a boat, saying it's going to float. World's going to flood. We don't even know what flooding is. Never seen water come out of the sky. Y'all stay away from him. Kids at school, stay away from his kids. Won't know that religious stuff running up off of on, on, on y'all. Then people at Millsfield, they're crazy. They're crazy. They think there ain't but one way to heaven. Stay away from them, folks. They're crazy. This religious stuff. They don't like. Now they're narrow-minded. 
Them people out at Millsfield, they're, they're about this narrow. I mean, they're against everything. You just want you just stay away from them crazy people. And boy, after 120 years, and Noah's over there just hammering, hammering all that stuff, and then people, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. He's up on a ladder building an ark. Who knows? Go fl- water out of the sky. What is that? Then all of a sudden, here comes two giraffes by the kitchen window. Man, I ain't never seen two giraffes come through the kitchen window. Where are they headed? Well, they look like they're headed over to that ark. Get on that ark. Well, why is it two of them? Well, I mean, honey, you've got to understand, it takes a blue one and a pink one. You've got to have a blue one and a pink one. If you want more giraffes after this flood, you've got to have a blue one and a pink one. If you've got two blue ones, you, your giraffes are going to die and you ain't going to have no giraffes. If you put two pink ones on there, then you're going to have, they're going to die off and they, well, they won't produce. Is this helping anybody? Amen. You got to have a blue one and a pink one. <laughs> that wasn't even, let me check. No, nope, that wasn't in the notes. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, and Noah's family, his wife, three sons, their uh, her, uh, wives, eight people get on the ark, and God, Bible says God, psh, psh, shut the door. Yeah. It started to rain. Honey, there's something coming out of the sky. I've never seen this before. It's getting all, it's getting mud tracked in all of the house. Oh, I wouldn't think nothing about it. It's just crazy times we're living in. About an hour or two later, it's done got up in the kitchen. Honey, what are we going to do? It's getting up in the kitchen. It's water's getting up over my knees. Don't you think we need to go down there and check on and see about Noah? Well, now, if we go down there, you know that we're, we're trying to be good in the community, and I'm thinking about running for something next year, and, and we don't need to be seen with him. But, but honey, it's, it's up over the coffee table. All right, we'll go down there, and we'll see what's going on. By the time they get down there, the door is shut. Noah, Noah. Noah, you in there? You know I was kidding, Noah. You know we were just funning with you. Yep. Open this door. My kids, Noah, I'm having to, I'm having to hold them up, and I, I can't hold them up much further. Come on. Come on. Noah, can, can, can you hear me, Noah? Can you open this door? Noah can't open it because he didn't close it. You imagine them people out there. You imagine them people. Noah, we're sorry. I repent. I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry. Please open the door. Hear me one more. Noah, we was just funning. I didn't mean, I'll let our kids play together. Noah. There is repentance. It's too late. You say, preacher, that's the Old Testament. I'll give you a New Testament if you want it. I tried to do my homework. Matthew 25, y'all remember 10, 10 uh, virgins? Five were wise, five were foolish. Five had their lamps trimmed with oil. Five didn't. And when the bridegroom came, the five that didn't have their lamps trimmed, they ran off in town to buy some oil. So they, and while they were gone, the bridegroom came. And when they come back, you're not going to believe this. With a, you're not going to believe this unless I show it to you. Matthew 25, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was Repentance is too late. Now you say, preacher, what's that got to do? Let me tell you. You know what we preach and a lot of other churches do too? The Lord's coming back. The Lord's coming. 
It's almost like Noah saying, hey, there's water going to come out of the sky. Lord's coming back. <laughs> Brother Jeremy's crazy. That church is crazy. We never heard this stuff before. It's crazy. He's trying to get us to come to all he's wanting is our money. He's trying to build a building. All he's wanting is our money. I mean, just stay away from that. They, you know, where I go to church, they, they give you a 15-minute a, a sermonette, and, and they sang all these songs for about an hour and 10 minutes. And then the preacher gets up. He'll give a little 10-minute sermonette for the Christianette, smoking a cigarette, driving a Corvette, trying to get to the kitchenette. And we leave, we feel so good when we go to church there. And then the Lord comes. Everybody say, gone. Let me tell you what's going to happen. I'm not a prophet or son of a prophet, but I can tell you what's going to happen. Christ Church Baptist Fellowship, as soon as the Lord comes, will be full. Every seat will be full. They'll be standing up. All of the bills. Every table back there will be full. There will people be out in the parking lot waiting, trying to get in here. You know what people are going to be doing? They rush down this altar. God, I'm sorry. I repent. Repentance too late. When the door shut, it's over. Revelation 4 1 says, And I saw a door open in heaven. The first voice I heard, Come up hither. After that door shuts, it's over. A lot of people. You say, Preacher, you know, uh, look, we want, we want our church full. I can, prom I can promise you this church will be full the day after the Lord comes. Yep. Every seat will be full, the altars will be full. Nobody be able to get up here to be full. People repenting, confessing their sins. God, I'm sorry. You were right. I was wrong. It was too late. Sammy's coming to the piano. Let me ask you something. Are you saved? I'm not talking about a member of the church. I'm not talking about baptized somewhere. Are you saved? If the Lord was to come right now, would you be one of the ones? Gone. That could be the Lord calling right now. He's calling right now saying, hey, y'all saved? Have you repented? Yeah, preacher, I, I repent everything I've dare, ever done. Well, I doubt that. I doubt you remembered them all. But how about we just get to the root of the problem? God, I don't even know everything I've done. Doesn't forget it. But God, the reason is, is because I'm a sinner. I need you to save me. Your book says I'm a sinner. I agree with that book. I will agree with you over myself. And I repent. That, my friend, is true Bible repentance. There's false repentance, there's godly repentance, and then there's repentance too late. Let's all stand all over the building. Who's coming to the altar right now to pray? I need, I need somebody to come pray for somebody. Pray for somebody in the seat right now. It's not safe.